Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an impressionist realist painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde J. Gale. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, volcanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand and watercolor, pen and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. Welcome to the Artist Friends Podcast. This is Clyde J. Kell. It is Monday, June the 1st, and this is our first episode for the month of June, episode 48, and I'm here with my two best artist friends, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson, and hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hello, everyone. Hello, Constance. Hello, Clyde. Hello, Diane. Hello, everybody. And thank you, folks, for listening to the to our podcast. I hope you are at least either in, entertained or receiving some information or being motivated or inspired to pursue an art career. This week, I decided to talk about the, uh, art, the uh, Klein Artist Works course. Uh, we are, the three of us, we are graduates of Paul Klein's course, and we paid for it. <laughs> Paul uh, has been fighting cancer for quite some time now. And this last year, he uh, has has basically gone into uh, hospice now at home. But before that, he put the entire course and the entire videos up online for free. The course that we paid for is available for free. And that's okay. This is a gift to artists around the world. So... You want to go? You want to find out more about it? Just go to um, www.talkartpodcast.com. That's talkartpodcast.com, and you'll see the link to the Klein's uh, uh, website to the course course materials. What we're going to talk about is what we received from the course. I know one thing for me: when I took the course, it was in uh, September of. Uh, 2017, wasn't that, Diane, when we, we started it? I believe so. Yeah. It was a, it was 10 weeks. We would meet every Monday night uh, in a Zoom room, and Paul would uh, start out with his uh, uh, monologue for that particular subject. He The week before, he sent out an email with the recommended videos for us to watch of uh, webinars and interviews that he had uh, conducted over the years with uh, the artists and art collectors and uh, dealers and the major art movers in the art world. And his purpose of his course was to show that these are ordinary people, that not to be afraid to contact these people. And then we would discuss during the Zoom meeting our opinions, our impressions, 
and uh, what we received, you know, from those interviews. And uh, he would uh, proceed accordingly. And the, it would stretch out for uh, 10 weeks. Like I said, we would meet every Monday for about an hour or so. And, of course, he would answer all of our questions if we had, you know, specific questions. For me, in February of 2017, I had decided to pursue this art journey, this career, this professional art career. Now, I've been an artist all my life, but I hadn't really uh, attempted or consciously attempted to pursue a career. However, I was completely naive and ignorant of the art world. I had misconceptions, you know. I thought, oh, these are all for the, you have to know the right people. You have to uh, uh, know the uh, other artists, uh, the, the connections, and you have to move in certain social economic uh, circles. These were all misconceptions. Paul blew these all away. And I would recommend for uh, any artist who is interested in pursuing a art career, a professional career, before you pay money for someone else's course, and there's a lot of them, and they're all very, very good. I'm not going to knock any particular uh, coach or uh, art course out there. They are all very wonderful, and there's different price points. Um, take advantage of these the free course that is now free from Paul. It will get you in the right frame of mind and uh, set you straight, maybe uh, help you develop a strategy to uh, pursue your art career. One of the things that which I learned from the course was, first of all, my misconceptions were completely blown away. And by halfway through the course, I was just so excited and enthused and knew I could pursue an art career. I could do it. Before, I wasn't sure. It looked like a very large mountain for me to climb. And one of the things that uh, Paul always emphasized was uh, baby steps. You take baby steps, and, you and if you have a continuous upward trajectory, you have to decide, do you want money? Do you want a fulfilling career? Or do you want to give your art away? You have to decide. He helps you decide that. And that's what I got out of it. Uh, Diane, what, what did you get out of it? Well, I've come from it since I went to art, you know, to college for art. Um, back in the day, <laughs> what you know, the myths or whatever you were just saying were the way, the only way to get into an art career. Like you had to, you know, research all these different galleries and try to get into a gallery. And it was they were gatekeepers, definitely. Mm -hmm. And you know. The, but nowadays with the internet, everything's changed and there, there is not that um, barrier anymore. So it's a different way of working and, you know, coming from, from having to try to go work through the gallery system and then going online, it was a bit of a leap, like trying to figure out how it all worked and how best to um, position yourself and stuff. So, he he talked a, quite a bit about having um, oh what, what, how did he put that um, building relationships well relationships but have there's different art communities oh, and villages yes different art villages art villages that's what he talked talk, uh -huh. called them and how you know there's different um, avenues that you can go to have a career and everybody's path is a different is different and you know the things we all want are not necessarily the same so we can all take different paths to get there so it's it's opened up a whole lot more than it used to and I guess that's the biggest thing I got out of the class that there's, there's that possibility is like it can be numerous yeah, not I, just I, one track Diane and I was in the same uh, same course in fact the course that uh, Paul has put up was from our uh, uh, K uh, K W twenty one, which is a course that we were in. So, folks, you'll see Diane videos <laughs> and Diane, yeah, and you're probably laugh because I <laughs> I sound like a complete idiot when we started out. <laughs> then it 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 clicked like for me about halfway through, you know, and I we both didn't hardly say much. I know, I remember Diane <laughs> Paul said, Diane, you want to say something? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but then we all opened up, yeah. And thankfully for Paul's course, that's what brought Diane and Constance and, and I together because we we were so enthused and we wanted to continue the, the momentum. And we had a few others who used to join us when we started out, you know, uh, Paul Mishik and uh, Ann Farley and uh, who was uh, um, uh, Mark. Mark Parker and, and you know, uh, who, Susan, yeah, there was a few of us, Susan. Yeah. And, and we, we continued for good Lord, probably all the way up to about three months or so. And then they, you know, they slowly, you know, dropped off. But uh, we continued the meeting because I wanted to, to keep, for my personal, I'll be honest with you, for a selfish reason, I knew <laughs> that if after I finished the course, if I didn't communicate with anybody, I would go back and probably wouldn't do anything. And we started meeting and we continued talking and looking at other videos and looking at Paul's videos again and going over. And it became a motivational, inspirational thing. And then we and some accountability too. Like we yeah. kind of, we were, we'd set goals and keep each other accountable and, you know, it helped us all to move forward and not stagnate. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it sure did. You know, so in fact, speaking of accountability, I think uh, next week we're, uh, we're going to have to talk about our goals for the month of June, July. Yeah. We haven't done that in a while. <laughs> yeah, no, we haven't. Yeah. But, uh, it, uh, and then, of course, what, this last year, then we just decided, these discussions are just so wonderful. We ought to record part of it, you know. And, of course, these two right away, video, no. No, no, we'll do audio. <laughs> yeah. yes. we, might, we might eventually start doing video, but right now we're just kind of, we're just doing the audio here. And it's working. Um, we are gaining a lot of listeners. Literally, literally thousands of listeners are listening to these podcasts. And we're also gaining confidence in, in speaking and talking about our art and talking about the, the whole business of art. And I mean, when we, when we first started, we were umming and, you know, we'd freeze up and we were having a hard time, you know, <laughs> talking and all of that. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a learning curve. I give mm -hmm. credit. I give. I give complete credit to Paul Klein. He was. He was a guru. He was. He was a sage. The the master. You know who uh, inspired us and motivated us. Constance, what did you get out of the course? Because you took the course. I think the 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 one after Diane and I. Yeah, I took. I was in KA twenty two. Yeah. KAW twenty two. Which was, and then nobody else was going to keep keep meeting when after i was done a couple of them decided they would but then i could tell they weren't so that's when i jumped in and asked you guys if i could come to yours yeah. because you guys were meeting regularly and i wanted to not let that momentum go um because it's just good to keep in touch with art, other artists because absolutely. you just get information from each other that you can use absolutely and we do we share information all, all the time mm -hmm. i this last week I did my first oil painting since I was 17 years old. I'm 61, folks, and I have not oil painted since I was 17. And one of my reasons for not oil painting was I didn't want to put up in a small apartment. I didn't want to put up with the the toxic the the toxic vapors and solvents and whatnot. I I knew I would kill myself. And then Diane, this is several months ago. Diane said, "Well, why don't you use the water oil?" And I said, "What? I didn't even hear that. I didn't even know about it." So after we got off our meeting, I uh, searched online and I found, I said, oh my God, there's a whole new world, you know, and <laughs> Diane, Diane guaranteed me before I purchased my first uh, uh, basic uh, walnut oil paint set of, uh, made by the M. Graham company, uh, I said, now are you sure it doesn't smell? No, no, there's no smell. Well, when I, as soon, soon as I, I, uh, it arrived, I opened the tube up to check it. Yep, there's no smell, <laughs> no it's no oil, no distinctive, you know, uh, or toxic or vapor, you know. Odor. So uh, I finally got around to doing my first uh, oil painting since I was 17 years old. And, oh, it was so wonderful. Now, had I not taken a Paul Klein course, had I not met <laughs> Diane, had I not met Constance, because those two keep after me. You're going to get you out doing some plain air, Clyde. You ought, you ought to set up and uh, still life and, and do it from a live painting. You'll find out it's so much better. Hey, it is. Once I jumped in, I uh, that's the only way I can think about painting now. Yeah, I'll still do my watercolors. I'll still do my acrylics. But uh, oil painting is definitely uh, on my list now. 
Yes. Yeah, you need to keep up your watercolors <laughs> because your watercolors are really nice. And so, but I, I, you can use that knowledge to move into the other. So yeah, it's, it's really an, all works together. It's an extra tool, just another, another mm -hmm. tool to, to better express my art. Well, you can do some watercolor studies before you actually paint in oils to get your, your paint, your st a study so that you know what colors you want to use and how you want it to, the, the, uh, Opposition. Uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I was trying to find that word and I could. Anyway, <laughs> composition, you can work the composition out in, in studies before you actually do the painting. So it helps you yeah, get the proportions idea. right and say, well, that doesn't look good in there. Let me erase that out and do something else, you know. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, I posted on my uh, on my Facebook page the, the painting. I actually, I did two this last week. I did two of them. I was so excited with the first one that uh, I did a second one and it came out even better. Because you know, I remembered the mistakes I had made in the first one, and the the, the problems here and there that I had, and uh, yeah, working with oil is different, but oh, it's so much fun, so much fun, and uh, and just so uh, in enjoyable. But uh, Constance, what did you uh, receive, or what did you get out of the Paul Klein's course? Well, I went into the course hoping that this guy was going to help me find somebody to broken my artwork out and sell it for me so i wouldn't have to do that part of it and what i learned was know that you're gonna have to do that yourself and and uh but the pro the thing about it is he does all these uh webinars with all of these artists and dealers and gallerists and you have a whole list of people if you want to to connect with to make relationships with to possibly show your art with them or or somebody local but i mean he does have and it he lets you realize that because he was once a gallery owner that they're not these big lords who don't want you know the gate like the gatekeepers you know so just because that caper, gatekeeper doesn't want you just go to another one i mean so they don't want you fine go find somebody else because there's there's you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people who have galleries. He actually gives you, he, he, uh, he inspires you and motivates you. He gives you the courage to not to be afraid to contact. I contacted mm -hmm. uh, a few of the artists and a few of the guys in emails, and I got very pleasant replies, you know, mm -hmm. I, after, after watching the, uh, you know, the interview. And, of course, I would always put uh, Paul Klein as a courtesy copy, you know, on, uh, and he would, he would uh, come back and say, Way, way to go. That's the way you do it. Yes. <laughs> and, it, you know, it's a continued, uh, you know, relationship, you know, and, uh, and it's like taking baby steps, building, a, building a relationship. You just don't go up to somebody and say, Hey, here's my art. Why don't you put me in the gallery? No, it doesn't work that way. You know, you've got to, uh, develop a, a, a relationship and you do that through, and it doesn't make any difference if you're located in 10 buck two, you know, uh, you have the internet. It can be done with the internet and it's at your mm -hmm. fingertips. You just have to have the courage and the motivation. And, uh, he talks in the course, how you go about that. And, uh, yeah, it, it does. inspires you. So, uh, for all of you, uh, young artists or even older artists, artists who are, you're on the fence about starting a professional career. Yes. It's a lot of work. Yes. It's hard work. However, it's well worth it. I truly would recommend that you take the Paul Klein course and now it's free of charge. You can go through the, uh, all of the 10 sessions and watch the recommended videos and watch the discussions and take down notes and develop the, uh, the contacts and contact some of the interviews. And um, mm -hmm. plus you can contact us if you have any questions. I'm sure Diane and Constance, I will be glad to answer your questions, you know? So, um, that is, uh, okay. I think that's about all I'm going to say about that. I can't push it that, that enough. It is, it's a wonderful treasure that Paul Klein has given to artists around the world. Now the other recommended videos with a little bit of, uh, motivational talk from Gary Vanacek. And what do you think about Gary's, uh, uh, talk concerning the truth about social media? Diane Constance, either one of you got any comments on that? Well, the, the whole thing with the social media, I mean, it, it's convenient having stuff online and, 
you know, people can hide behind their screens and post questions or comments or, you know, find out a lot of information from all over the place about things. But you can't um, live for likes and, <laughs> you know, that, that gratification kind of stuff because it's not necessarily a real thing it's like <laughs> it can go away tomorrow and then what it's like yeah so absolutely. I, I have really, to have several irons in the fire not just <laughs> one or two <laughs> but i think the emphasis of gary's talk was that social media could go away and he would still be happy because yeah. it's, it's we're all old enough that we didn't have internet when we were growing up so we have that advantage in, in a way that we didn't grow up, you know, trying to please somebody on the other side of the screen that you don't even know. I mean, that's Absolutely. like. Absolutely. <laughs> right. So, so, you know, the, the, the focus of, like, you know, Gary says, even if social media goes away, he will go with the next service of attention. It's about gaining attention. That's all it's about. And you gain attention, you develop relationships. And that's goes back to what Paul Klein, the truth of Paul Klein, yeah, talked about it. building relationships. That's it's human to human communication. And that's what it should be used for, you know, in, in that sense. It goes on in his second video and talked about it, it said live life on your own terms. You know, don't uh, don't listen to the uh, you know the doubters and the, the naysayers and uh, uh, you want to pursue an art career, then do it. Sit down and do it. <laughs> you know, don't. So that was a you know really a really good talk. And then I had the third video it was a t TED talk where a guy talked about getting rid of your self doubt. So I guess the theme of this uh, session is uh, that's a good theme actually. Self doubt. Say so, well. Yeah. Because everybody has that. Most most everybody does. Some people don't, I guess. You know, my, my, my art isn't as good as the next guy, you know. God, <laughs> look at all those beautiful paintings. My stuff is crap. I can't do that. Well, yes, you can. You know, you have to, you have to knock the, that negativity out of your head. You've got to. If, and another thing that Paul Klein talked about, of course, he says, as an artist, you can't help yourself. You are are a creative it's in your genes it's what you're meant to be if you're not creating visual art you're doing something else creative creatively you're knitting or you're cooking or you know you it has a certain create or you're singing or you know you have a certain creativity uh, bone you know and it has to come out you can't help yourself so why not exploit it why not pursue it and why why not have live a very happy life because as artists i like it and he used the term he says we're shamans we're magicians <laughs> we, we we can do things uh, that no one else in the world you can do it may look like there's thousands and thousands of other artists out there but but there's there's not there's uh, you are unique you are uh, very unique and your perspective and your creations are yours you came up with that and all you have to do is connect with somebody that likes it and mm -hmm. that wants it and that appreciates and maybe you're all i think yeah i think the whole thing of self-doubt you're you're constantly um trying to improve and so everything you've done before isn't as good <laughs> so you, you yeah, you're constantly kind of putting yourself down and say, oh, I can, I know I can do that better or I have to do it better next time. You know, it's like, so you have that in your head all the time anyway. But mm -hmm. um, when you let it take over is when you run into problems. And sometimes, you know, people make a comment or something on something you've posted or, you know, on your work and you wonder if they're right or, or not. Or, you know, it's like, it, it kind of puts that negativity in your head and makes it more alive. So you, you have to um, kind of keep a wall up a little bit about some of that kind of stuff so that it doesn't get you down too take, much. Take it with the, like a grain of salt. I'll give you an example. Yeah. Uh, last week, 
uh, I posted one of my uh, works of art in the one of the uh, uh, artist groups, painting groups on uh, on Facebook, and immediately I received a comment from I guess this woman was an art coach or something because she started criticizing. Well, no, I see you need to do this and this and this. And by the way, I teach this. You ought to join my academy. Oh. <laughs> First thought that went to my mind was, no, I'm not going to have a thing to do with you because you don't go about showing. <laughs> 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 I mean, no, you don't do that. Yeah, <laughs> you know? constructive criticism, okay, but then at the end, you want me to sign up for your course? No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> and there's quite well, a. And, and I don't know why it is about the internet. Like it. it <laughs> Some people think it's like a free reign that you can say or do whatever you want on there. And I mean, you weren't asking for a criticism. Like, no, you know, so. Or to be critiqued. <laughs> yeah, it's like, <laughs> I mean, when you're asked for it, it's one thing, but when you're just like told that. Yeah, absolutely. I, that's the first time I received it, you know, a comment like that. But, you know, hey, it's, you know, so yeah, I'm just thinking, okay, fine. Thank you. I replied, thank you. And that's all I did. I didn't, didn't try to, you know, go back and you know, anything nasty. I just said, thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's and, the best know, way to handle it. And you know? about my business, you know? So the point is, is don't let the negativity and the doubts stop you. That's the important thing. Don't let them stop you. Keep on going, keep on. And I truly recommend for our listeners is to pursue this, um, Paul Klein's course, it will get your head set up in the right direction. And then from there, there's lots of other courses, you know, and coaches that are just as wonderful. You know, Sergio Gomez, we, we uh, use a lot of his free videos. There's a lot of, he puts a lot of material out there for free. Uh, Brandon Carey puts material out there. Um, Kelly Folsom. In fact, what's interesting, when I decided to start oil painting, I watched like three of Kelly Folsom's videos and that's what got me motivated, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I like, her, I love her videos. I like her style of painting, you know, she was, she's been a guest a couple of times on our podcast here. And uh, so um, it, uh, you know, and each of these, each of these coaches are wonderful in their own way and, and you may click with them, but the point is it can cost money while you're doing this. So uh, I truly recommend that you, if you don't have a budget, Utilize the Paul Clients course now that it's free. It used to be a thousand dollars, and now he's put the entire course up there for free, and uh, pursue that. And then, if you need something else, if you need some specific strategies for the internet and some specific, and you can't find a reliable free source, you may want to check out some of the paid courses. But save your money, buy our supplies. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. You two got anything else to add to that? Because. Right well, as far as other courses and things, I mean, a lot of them say the same thing in maybe a little bit different way, and or sometimes you hear it differently and you're ready to hear it maybe, you know, and somebody else said the same thing and you didn't, you weren't ready for it yet, so you didn't yeah. sink in. So a lot of times, even even the same course, you can go back later and listen to it, you know, months months past or something and. You listen to it again, and all of a sudden things start making sense and clicking. And that's like you've already heard all the information once, but you know, some, for some the, reason, it, the three of us we click with Stephen Bauman a lot. He off, has provides a lot of free material and very instructive free you know, free material. He has his videos, and then he's now doing his podcast and uh, his uh, his personal coaching, and his uh, you know is, is pretty expensive. And someday. I will have the budget, and I I am definitely going to uh, uh, sign up as and for his his coaching in the future. I can't do it now, but right now I'm utilizing all the material that he's offered for free, which has been sufficient actually. I've been uh, uh, doing pretty good. Like whenever I uh, did that painting this last week, you know, my first painting, in my mind was a comment that he used to he says it several times in courses. Use luscious paint strokes, luscious paint. <laughs> that I just kept hearing that, you know, as I was painting. Luscious <laughs> colors and luscious strokes. Colors. Luscious colors. Luscious. I like, I like that. Luscious. And it's bold luscious. Paint strokes. <laughs> Put it down one time and don't go back over it. And I mean, it's it, oh, and it was working. It was going through my. Yeah, so, 
<laughs> so, and of course, he's a big proponent of painting and oils and painting from life, plain air. You know, he's uh, <laughs> he doesn't like photographs. He doesn't care for watercolors. He doesn't. <laughs> and another thing, which which uh, prompted me to, for the subject matter, he takes or another thing he talks about. He takes uh, ordinary objects and turns them spectacular. Like I had a painting with a jar, glass jar, and water foil, aluminum foil, and made it spectacular. I mean, with the reflections and the shadows, that's all because of Stephen Bauman. Listen to listen to his material over and over again. And because yeah, he said it's not about the things you're painting; it's about what was the other thing? The light, the light and the shadows. You're not painting things; you're painting shadows and lights. Yes. Absolutely, and that's that's that was going through my mind. You know, I wouldn't paint an aluminum foil, and I wouldn't paint in a glass jar. I was painting the shadows and the and the lights, and how and the reflective nature of and how the light was bouncing off the jar and bouncing off the aluminum foil, and that's and that came out. You know, so uh, I'm thinking about hey, he has a thing where he painted French fries one time. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna make yourself hungry <laughs> yeah <And painting. laughs> it wouldn't last long enough on the, on the table for me yeah, yeah. that's it i'd probably end up eating them yeah, I got it done. <laughs> okay well that's going to be it for this episode of the artist friends podcast episode uh, 48 for june the 1st 2020 and thank you to everyone for tuning in i really hope you find these podcasts beneficial please Send us an email, cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. And wherever you find the podcast, give us a five stars and a thumbs up. Really, really appreciate that. To uh, let us know that you enjoy these podcasts and we'll uh, continue producing them. And um, if you would like to be a guest, even if you just want to sit in, but you don't want to participate in the recording, that's okay because I can mute you. So, but just as a you know you can just uh sit in and get to get to see who we are and uh you know and we always hold a we're using me for about an hour and we spent about 30 minutes just talking about random things and how our week was and then we start the recording up so uh you're welcome to join us at uh cjkl at sign mystery dash otr.com and just put but i want to join in the subject line and i'll Make sure that uh, you get the notice and uh, in our meeting. And um, thank you for listening. And bye bye, Diane. Bye bye, Constance. Good night, Clyde. Good night, Constance. Good night, everyone. Good night, Clyde. Good night, Diane. Good night, everybody. Bye bye, folks. Thanks for listening. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Bronson at www.edsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C-B-R-O-S-N-A-N-S. Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com. If you would like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. If you enjoy these podcasts, please give us a thumbs up or a star rating. And most of all, send us your comments. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license.